translation back there? Okay, I got it up here. Psalms 141 and verse number 3. And it says in verse 3 from the Passion Translation, God give me grace to guard my lips from speaking what is wrong. God give me grace to guard my lips. <laughs> God give me grace to guard my lips. The King James says, set a watch over my mouth. Passion Translation says, grace me to guard my lips from speaking what is wrong. So this is being said in the context of I need to make sure that my words are right. Now, I never looked at it from the uh, Passion Translation perspective. And that is, we need to intentionally and willfully watch for wrong words and not get offended when someone check it or even bring it to your attention, but acknowledge it and receive it because we're talking about that which will dictate to life or death in our lives. God never set you in the earth for you to be controlled by a system, circumstances, people, situations, or relationships. He put you in the earth to reign and to rule in life as kings and as priests. He said you are a royal priesthood, you are a holy nation, you are peculiar children, of the most high God. So that tells me and tells all of us that we're supposed to do what? Dominate. Dominate in the earth. In the earth. Remember when he made Adam and Eve? He said, I'm making you in my image and in my likeness, and I'm giving you dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth. He set them in that garden. And they were the people that had full control over everything. Whatever Adam and Eve said to the lion to do, the lion had to do it. Whatever Adam and Eve said to the tiger to do, the tiger had to do it. God hadn't changed his mind. Malachi says it like this, he changeth not. The Hebrew writer says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, how, watch Go, go to Genesis chapter number one. Genesis chapter number one. It says that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Hold right there for a moment. The earth was without form and void. Thousands of years transpired from that time of God creating the earth until it became void. And that's because Satan had become, or rather Lucifer had become Satan and was fallen or kicked out from the presence of God. And that's how the darkness came on the earth. So God took his words and he recreated what he had already created. I want to say to you today, what are you creating with your mouth? Darkness has to bow to light. Your words are spirit. Life, excuse me, death has to bow to life. Your words are spirit and they are life. Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickeneth, maketh alive. John 6, 63, he said, the flesh profiteth nothing. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, what we'll see here in Genesis chapter number one is God's way of getting things done, his operandum. That's what I'm about to read to you. 
and the earth was without, was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God what? And God what? And God what? He didn't throw his hands out. He didn't do anything spooky wooky like we see religion doing today. But he opened his mouth and he said to everything that was void, empty. Nothing existed that he had made originally. Because when Satan fell, he brought darkness with him. Jesus said, I beheld Satan. He said it in Luke's gospel, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. So we can reconstruct what looks like its defeat. We can rearrange what now looks like blackness. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Even though, go back to verse 2. Even though the earth was without form and void and darkness was on it, darkness was upon the face of the deep. Go back to number 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So that which was dark, that which was void, it came into the conformity of what? The spoken words of God. Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How? With your mouth. Not with jumping. But with your mouth. Not with crying, not with complaining, not with being sad and being upset, but with your mouth. Yes. We are going to have to learn how to maintain speaking the language of the word of God. Because therein resides our triumph and victory. And we're going to have to learn how to be consistent with it. Hebrews 10, 23, and hold fast to your confession without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Isaiah 55, his word which goeth forth out of his mouth, it will not return back to him void, but it will accomplish that which he pleased. It will prosper in the thing whereto he sent it. What you're sitting in today is something that God put in my spirit that I formed in my mouth and spoke it into manifestation with a group of people about this size and a few of you all over here coming from a, a, a burger shack down the street here. Receiving two, three hundred dollars, sometimes a thousand in the offering. And you're sitting in a building now today that, that appraises it three, four million dollars. The ground under you praises it a million dollars. Bought it for a hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Come on now. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Because I came to the revelation of the power of the words formed in the tongue, spoken out of my mouth. And God said, Let there be light, and what happened? There was light. Go ahead, number four. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Hold right there. And God saw the light that was good, and God saw what he said was good. So when we say what God said, we're going to see what God said, and we're going to see that it's good. Oh, we've, we've got to recapture this principle. We've got to recapture this way of living. All right, look at Hebrews chapter number 11, son, verse number three. I never seen this in the Passion. I want to see it, though, but let, let me read it from the King James first. You, sh you don't have that in the Passion. Either. You don't have the Passion, period, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, through faith we understand. Through faith what? We understand. Look up at me for a moment. 
Hosea put it like this in Hosea 4, 6, but my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because they rejected knowledge, they rejected me. Now, a rejection of the word of God is a reflection of, is a, is a reflection of soon destruction. Any and everybody that's rejecting the knowledge of God are headed to destruction. Why? Because the, the word of God is light and life. It's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. <laughs> so anybody that's rejecting, rejecting the knowledge of God, God calls them ignorant. I, I didn't call it no, anybody. God called the person that rejects his word ignorant. He says, because you rejected my word, you rejected me. And when I read that, I understood better what Hebrews 11 and 3 was saying when it says, through faith we understand. <clears throat> now I understand why you act like you act because you're operating out of stupidity because of not knowing what the word of God says. Are y'all listening to this today? Through faith we understand. Through faith we understand why there's racism. Through faith, never, never connected that to faith, did you? Through faith we understand why there's poverty. Through faith we understand why people are sick unto death and they die prematurely. Through faith we understand why uh, certain relationships don't function like God said they're supposed to. Why? Because the persons that are operating over there in that place of death, sorrow, weakness, and destruction, they don't understand faith. And they don't understand faith because they don't understand God's word. And when you don't understand God's word, you're in a dark place. Amen. But now if you, if you measure success and divine, define success based on your car, based on your house, and based on those kind of things, you really don't know what faith is. You don't understand what faith is because faith is much bigger than a house and a car. All right. So through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. How, ladies and gentlemen? How was the worlds framed? So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Glory to God forevermore. Faith says, put the word in your heart, form it in your tongue, speak it out of your mouth, and it'll start to put together some photo shots of who you are and where you're going and what you're to be and what you can become established in. Because really, a person without the Lord Jesus Christ and don't understand faith, they don't know who they are, they don't know where they're going, and they don't know what they're supposed to be established in. Only when you become born again of the Spirit of God and receive the spirit of faith, the measure of faith, then and only then will your future be revealed to you. Not only just your future, but your purpose, which is more important than your future. You can't know your future without your purpose. So God reveals to you your purpose, first of all. And that purpose is, I've been put here in the image and likeness of God to rule and reign, to be a light set on a hill, to be the salt of the earth, to be thou an example of who Jesus is, to go about healing the sick, raising the dead, opening blinded eyes, establishing the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Boy, you talking up in here today. Hmm? Hmm? So through faith, we understand. I said through faith, we understand. Through faith, we understand when a man won't take care of his children. We don't understand that emotionally. We don't deal with that emotionally. We don't deal with that out of a behavior of feelings. We don't deal with that through our five physical senses because we won't be able to come to the solution or the conclusion of what we need to do as it relates to how to handle it. But through faith, we understand. So this guy that don't take care of his children, we don't talk to him about that. We talk to him about where he is spiritually. And when we talk to him about who he is spiritually, that the blinders will come off. See, if you keep nagging your husband about what he's doing, he'll keep on doing it. But if you keep nagging him about what God said, 
as it relates to who he is as a husband. Good God Almighty. I feel like running right through there, right, right through there. But I might hit Lethal if I do so. Because he don't understand. We've got to stop judging people, scrutinizing people, and dealing with people based on what they are doing. Because if they had the knowledge of the truth of God's word, they wouldn't be doing it. When they go to church, I ain't talking about going to church. So through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. How? By the word of God. But look at this part right here. By the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made with things which do appear. So God's word, when I feast on it like I'm supposed to feast on it, please catch this, causes me to function from the unseen. Why, God? Because whatever you see is temporal and is subject to change. God says, I'm going to introduce you to the unseen that you can change what will change to be unchanged and it always remain. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear that, so you got to get the CDs, the tape, or whatever you're going to get. Hmm? So that things which are seen were not made by what? Things that are not seen. So therefore, we never now pursue what's in the natural to be the ultimate as it relates to our change. Ah. Why? Because God's word is what? Spirit and life. So he says, you make contact with my word, my word will make you cause, well, excuse me, you make contact with my word and my word will introduce you to the unseen. Yes, amen. He's saying here because everything comes from where? The unseen. And the only way I'm going to be able to explore the unseen is that I've got to grow in the word. I've got to OD on the word, overdose on it every day. And now supernaturally, that word will push me mentally, spiritually, in my behavior into a place of seeing things that are supposed to be that haven't yet manifested. That's why you are at an, you are at an advantage in the earth. You're not at a disadvantage. Don't ever allow your circumstances and situations, your atmosphere or environment or where you are as it relates to this world judging your status to dictate to how you function. Because God said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm talking about y'all acting. Than he that is in the world. And that sounds like an advantage to me. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that you're at an advantage? You're not at a disadvantage. That's why I don't trip with you black and you lower class and you black and you, you know, you second class citizen, you black and you need to get on welfare and you black and you need some help. I don't trip with that because God has changed my entire behavior as it relates to my status. Amen. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm a peculiar child of the most high God. The greater one lives on the inside of me. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I have the blessing. I'm empowered to prosper. My steps are ordered by the Lord. He is directing my way. My path is as a shining light, and it shines more and more until the perfect day. Glory be to God forevermore. I have no need of anything, for he's given me all things that pertain unto life and godliness. You say, where is it then? On the inside of me. And you keep looking, huh? If you follow me around, you're going to see it manifest on the outside of me. So through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So watch this. The unseen world excuse me, the unseen word has the capacity and the ability to go into the unseen world and bring to manifestation something that we can see with our eyes 
and feel with our hands. How many of y'all didn't know how you bad to the bone, but and didn't even know it until you came over here to 857 today. That's why you ain't got no business tripping with nobody to think they deep. The deep you are cried unto the deep. Ain't nothing you can tell me. There ain't nothing you can show me outside of J-E-S-U-S. In him we live and in him we move and in him we have our being. As some of the poets have said, the book of Acts says that, you know. We're his workmanship, God's workmanship, not created in Buddha, not created in Muhammad. We're God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is the Messiah. Christ is the anointing. We've been created. When you got born again, there was an instant creation of the anointing that made its residence on the inside. You good God Almighty, boy. Woo! Yes, sir. Glory. Yes, sir. And this, this, this religiosity is trying tooth and toenail to talk you out of it. Wanting you to identify with something other than the Christ. This resident on the inside of you that destroys yokes, disintegrates strongholds, destroys shackles, removes burdens, quickens to the degree to when restoration and healing takes place. Reverse situation. That anointing that's in you is what I'm talking about. You think I got time to uh, identify with something that's rumper room? What? <laughs> See, I know that my words brought me out of Barrington Oaks. You didn't hear what I said. I said, I know that my words, I know that the words that got what I taught, what I learned, what I'm teaching now, brought me out of Barrington Oaks, where they were shooting and acting crazy. I talked by the word of God my way out of Barrington Oaks. You can talk your way out of sickness. You can talk your way out of disease based on the Bible. Now, anything else, you know, you think you can smart your way out of it. Go ahead and you see how smart you are. You can talk your way out of depression. Well, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. Stop confessing that. I'm hurting, I'm hurting, I'm hurting. Well, you know, this time of year, I always get sick. I always come down with something. And you get it. You, you, you know, you end up with it. This marriage is not getting any better. You're going to have it like that. I'm just living from paycheck to paycheck. You are forecasting and prophesying your future. I never say I'm broke. I never say I'm sick. I never say I'm hurting. I don't, listen, I know the pain exists. when so, Listen, had, had, a, had a challenge. Something confronted me yesterday. I don't deny that it don't exist. I deny its existence in my body through the word of God. I'm not denying that the pain is there. I'm not crazy. And if you hadn't learned this and developed in this, your best bet is to go ahead on to the doctor and believe God while you're in there. Put some faith at work concerning that. And then when you take the pill, take it in the name of Jesus and believe God to move upon uh, by the power of his spirit to do what's necessary that you not have to deal with the side effects of it. I never, you, 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 you people probably think this, but I've never come against physical science because anytime anything is trying to help anybody, I'm in agreement with it. But medical science and the word together, just think about that. That's a double portion. But I have to continue to teach you how that you don't even have, you don't have to depend on medical science or no other science. I just need some people to know that you can walk in the liberty of God's word and reap the benefits and walk in the fullness of it. 
I, I just need some people to know that you can increase your bank account, you can increase your health, you can bring your marriage to a place of harmony and peace and joy and tranquility. It's all in the word and you can do it, but you got to work it every day. You got to keep your mouth busy. And you cannot continue to entertain the pain. You got to entertain the word. And the other thing is you got to stop talking to people about how you're feeling. You know how you're feeling. God know how you're feeling. You don't want to keep on talking about, well, I am, I'm not feeling good today. You may not be feeling good today, but that should not be your confession. Because if that continues to be your confession, that's going to be your possession. Bible says, awake unto righteousness. God has paved the way. He's given you everything that you have need of to combat the forces of evil in this earth today. You know, people be, you know, trying to say to me, or uh, my nephew, bless his heart, I love him so much. Well, Unc, you know you're getting older. No, I didn't know that. Is that what you, is that what you know? <laughs> now, y'all don't understand that, okay? You don't understand. In other words, he's trying to say to me, now I need to conform to a certain lifestyle and function a certain way. No, I'm going home today to do some chill, to, to do on, pump some iron. <laughs> when I finish this here, yeah, I'm going to eat me some spinach like Popeye the sailor, man, and go pump some iron. You're alive, you think you can't pump iron at 70. Right. Yes, You've settled for that. But I talk to my body. I tell it what it's going to eat what it's going to do, what it's not going to do. I tell it when it's going to go to sleep. And even if, I, even if I don't do it, the next day I'm still saying the same thing. Amen. I tell my body, you're going to drink water. You say you don't like water, you're going to drink water anyway. Amen. I'm in charge of you. You're not in charge of me. Amen. I tell my eyes, you don't look at that. You don't, you don't look at that. Eyes, you don't look at that. I said, eyes, you don't look at that. You look straight forth. You look right on. You don't put no unclean thing before your eyes and you don't look on women with lust. Eyes get back into the conformity of the word of God that declares I'm holy as God is holy. You got to keep this in your mouth. You got to keep all this alive in your mouth, ladies and gentlemen. Stop crying broke. I'm getting, I'm running short on money and all that kind of junk and then want me to do some Superman miracle when you come up in here. You have to work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. This is a word of faith church. It's a faith-filled church. This is the way we teach up in here, and it just may not be what you want or what you need or what you struggle at believing. I've been, we've been working this for 40 years. You're looking at the evidence. Zero doctor bill. Hmm? That's big. Zero doctor bill. You ought to want to stand, you ought to want to sit in front of somebody that had brought, gone into the land, spied it out, defeated the enemy, and now coming back with the evidence. I look in the mirror, I don't look at gray hairs. I say, boy, you still look like a little boy. You still look like a young tenderoni boy. And see, you don't sit and get jelly of that. Y'all don't know what jelly is, do you? That's jealous. That's 16-year-old talk there. Jelly. Because jelly, man. No, you don't get jealous of that. But you say, Father, I thank you that you still have somebody in the earth that has the evidence that helps my believing and helps my hoping. It helps my faith. It helps my expectation. Hmm? Hmm? I'm challenging you today. To get your words right. Yes, sir. I'm getting old now. I wonder if I ever get married. No. No. Because you done prophesied that part of your future. 
I wonder if I'll ever get off these pills. No. No, you're not going to get off those pills like that. I wonder if my children are, if you're wondering. We don't wonder. We have whatsoever we said. Huh? As a matter of fact, go to Mark eleven twenty two. Are y'all eating? Are you eating? You're not eating if you, you know, it's just, it's, out, it's laid out before you. So if I was you, I would eat today. Because what I'm teaching you is going to make you stop making excuses and stop playing the blame game and stop judging people and criticizing people. Listen, this is how you get rid of all that stuff. My wife and I, we don't sit around and gossip about people or talk negative stuff about what people said or what people are doing. And if you come around us like that, we're not going to have too much to do with you. Because you don't open yourself up to negativity because you know that that's going to produce and bring forth something. And Jesus answered and said unto them, have what? Have what? Have what? Look at your neighbor and ask him, do you have faith in God? Hmm? Have faith in God. Go ahead to verse number 23, please. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he what? Shall believe that those things which he what? (laughs) Shall come to what? He shall have what? He shall have whatsoever he said. Now look at me for a moment, because really... God just really inflamed this in me. Uh, Actually, uh, earlier this morning, he inflamed this in me. Mark 11 and verse number 22. He said, Carl, you've been reading that scripture there from the position of a Christian. He said, but I wasn't just talking to Christians with that scripture. So y'all think all the Bible is about Christians? Come on, Pastor. Come on. <laughs> really? Well, let me prove to you right now that you didn't know what you were believing or your believing was wrong because the latter part of that scripture, he says, he shall have whatsoever he said. Right. He didn't say the Christian. So whether you saved or unsaved, you get what you're talking about. Right. And if you look at your unsaved friends and see their life and how they're functioning and then listen to how they're talking, you'll know why. I said you'll know why. Now, let's go back at the beginning part of this. For verily I say unto you, didn't say Christian. He could have said, for verily I say unto you, my children. Verily I say unto you, my sons and daughters. But he didn't do it. That whosoever shall what? Say. Say unto this what? Say unto this mountain. Now, some people have translated that wrong. Well, mountain? You mean God want me talking to a mountain? And that's the sum total of how they translate that. But I want to say to you, he's talking about anything that shows up and appears big in your life, too big for you to handle. Come on now. Praise God. Watch it. Listen to this. Too big for you to handle out of your academic acumens, Mm -hmm. your rationale, mother wit, or your buff. God never intended for you to take natural understanding to combat spiritual things, which is all of it. 
one of the things that's happening in the body of Christ today is Satan and his cohorts have been given a pass concerning so much is going on in the lives of Christians. They get a headache and they don't liken that unto the devil. Their children get rebellious and they don't liken that to the devil. Sickness jump on their body and Satan is never addressed in, the, in those areas. He's, he's, no, he's been given a pass. He's no longer being addressed. And that's why we see a growth of corruption a growth of defeat in so many people's lives because they're ignoring the spirits of blackness and darkness is actually the reasons for it. Hmm? He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, I had a spirit of blackness to attack me yesterday and I said, Jesus, you said whatsoever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I attack this spirit right now, and I bind it in the name of Jesus. Now watch this. It didn't go anywhere. It didn't stop. What was happening didn't stop. All right? I, uh, I didn't know what to do at that point because I generally get quick manifestations. The Holy Spirit said, pray in the Holy Ghost. Because there was something that I wasn't seeing and hearing. And I began to pray in the Holy Ghost. And after praying in the Holy Ghost, I heard myself addressing it again the same way. And then I heard myself addressing it again the same way. And I want to be perfectly honest with you all, and you need to hear this. I dealt with that thing until I got ready to go to bed. See, sometimes we don't want to continue to fight the good fight of faith. When you realize that you're in a battle, ain't no time for you to sit in the corner talking about give me some more water. Some sometimes won't go by prayer and fasting. But I continued to say what I was saying as related to God's word to believe that what I was saying was God's word that would take care of this situation. And in the bed, not sleep, but wide awake, still dealing with it, it broke. Bam! <laughs> Even the adversary, Satan, spoke up himself and said, you're not going to preach the Bible tomorrow. You're not going to make it to that building tomorrow. You're not going to, anybody ever had him talking to you like that? You ain't going to go here. You ain't going to go here. You ain't, you're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. I'm stopping you. You're not going to do this. Well, devil, if you're listening in, I'm here. Now, here's the deal. I can't say what God say and not do what God say. I could have easily laid home in the bed and said to my wife or my son, listen, here's my notes. Go and teach out of that or whatever's on your heart. Go and share and teach out of that. I could have done that. But guess what? That would have been contrary wise. to what I've been saying all day yesterday and all the way to the bed. Because, listen, here's what the deal is. If you say what God said, you're going to get to a place now that you're going to get an assurance. <sighs> now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence or the assurance of things not seen. I knew God's word was going to raise me up if I would stay with That's it. Right. If I would stay with it, ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you to stay with it. Keep calling that boy saved. I don't care if he is slanging dope. Keep calling your marriage blessed. I don't care if one of y'all not acting right. 
You are opening yourself up for divine intervention of Almighty God, the power of God, the Holy Ghost, the angels to now come and move in your atmosphere and move on the lives of the people that it pertain to. Can you hear this today? I said, can you hear this today? By way of the internet, can you hear this today? Some of us in here today just need to be confessing because I'm telling you, man, it looks like you've been eating a pound of lemons when you come here sometime. And some of us need to just open up and declare, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Stop making people the problem and make yourself responsible for what's going on with your life and change what you're saying and you'll change what you're getting. Hallelujah. You listen, don't, don't listen, listen, listen. Don't let people see you getting hit because they'll open their mouth and start saying something that's crooked. Come on out here and Look, look like a million dollars, $20 million. Because you know if you can see it, it's temporal and it's subject to change. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. We've got to start framing our world with the words that God prescribed for us. I'm not feeling good. You think God just found out about it when you did? We need to stop treating him like he's estranged to us. He's been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He was tempted in all points like as we are today. He's not a stranger. You get to know Jesus like you're supposed to, you'll find out. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Hallelujah. I'll say this and I'm going to go to some more scriptures here. I remember when I had one suit, one pair of shoes, and holes was in the bottom of it. I used to get in the mirror and say, you're sharp. I'm talking about holes in the bottom of my shoes with one suit to go to church. I declared decrees back then because Job said, when you decree a thing, God will establish it. Man, I, I don't even know how many suits we got today. I was decreeing suits back then. I'm going to be teaching and preaching in High Point this week, three days, Divine Covenant Connection. My first piece is going to be on divine. My second piece is going to be on con connection. Div I mean, excuse me, covenant. My third piece is going to be on connection. The only reason I'm bringing this up right now is that I wore suits back then and still wear them today as a representation of a divine instrument in the hand of Almighty God. I ain't got no problem with other attire, but don't have no problem with my attire. I feel like I'm looking priestly when I look like this. The royal priesthood, you understand what I'm saying? But you know, I ain't talking about what you got on, so you know, don't have no problem with me. I'm a representative and an ambassador of Almighty God. I believe the greatest thing, though, is to dress up on the inside. Because <laughs> you can be dressed up on the outside and be a, a spiritual dud. Hmm? All right. Go ahead. Go ahead to a, a verse number 24, son. Therefore, I say unto you, what things serve you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. I'm going to say something to you that I never said. Never said. Just learn, actually. I want to say it just like I heard it, too. It takes faith 
to get your prayers answered. Your prayers don't do nothing for faith. Your prayers are void, empty, useless, and ineffective without faith. I knew you wouldn't get it when I said it, but you'll get it if you just keep thinking about it today. Pray for whatever it is that you want to pray for, but if you don't have faith to believe that you receive what you're praying about. Come and having all these church prayers and all that kind of stuff with an absence of faith, you're being religious. Never heard that one, did you, babe? Well, my prayer life, my prayer life, I got a strong prayer life. Where's your faith, baby? How strong is your prayer life? Now, I'm going to go somewhere, and I know some of you have another lineage and an inheritance in other places. I think some of the third world countries are looking like they're looking, even though they're the most praying people that you would ever come in contact with in your entire life. But I think a lot of them are still in ruin because they don't have the faith part of it. Ah, Jesus. They'll walk 30, 40 miles to get to a prayer meeting and walk 30, 40 miles to get right back to their hut and don't nothing change. just thought you needed to know because I sure needed to know. Hmm? Y'all ought to be throwing $100 bills at me right about now. I didn't say $1 bill, $100 bill. <laughs> I'm playing with you. You know, church folk, they be serious about that money, especially if you got on a suit like this and shoes like this and, you know, looking like this. <laughs> I, 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 y'all stop therefore I say unto you what things serve you desire when you pray he didn't say you'll have it and what does it take to believe faith I've been reading this scripture man for 40 years I have I've been reading this and teaching like this for 40 years before I ever got became a pastor I learned Mark 11, 22 through 24, and they leave out verse number 25 to go there. And when you stand praying, forgive. After you get in faith, faith going to cause you to do what? Forgive if you have anything against anybody. That's Carl's translation of it, but that's exactly what Jesus is saying. Because you're in violation and you will not see manifestation of verse number 23 or 24 if you walk around here harboring something. And he didn't say for me. He didn't say if you're not walking, he didn't say if you're walking in unforgiveness with me. And people a lot of times they'll say, well, I already asked God to forgive me. But yeah, did you go to Ann? Did you go to Bobby? Did you go to James? Now, we may have uh, discovered something here as to why we're not seeing the manifestation of the thing that we want. Well, I wouldn't want them to know that I felt like that about them. Well, keep, keep catching the bus then. <laughs> Y'all pretty quick. Y'all caught that, didn't you? Yeah. I had someone to call me, say something to me relative to a situation that they were in. And we talked about it. Love this person with all my heart. I do. And uh, so when I got up, we talked about it three days ago. When I got up the next day, it was still on my mind. And so I called them. And lo and behold, 
This was so awesome. This person said to me, you know, we talked about this, and I called you because I needed the wisdom of God on it. And it was a family member, and I honor you as a man of God, and I believe you walk in the wisdom of God. And that family member said to me, but you know what? I'm going to walk in love concerning this. I said, yeah, to myself and my spirit. And I said to that family member, that'll reverse the entire situation if you'll get in love about it. That person said, I'm not going to address them concerning the situation. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to get in love about it. Because watch it now. When love is demonstrated like it's supposed to be demonstrated, a behavior of forgiveness will be seen in that. A behavior of, I'm not holding alt against you. So you can't love people if you're holding alt. You can't love people if you, if you haven't forgiven them. And see, we need to be forgiven if we're going to be forgiven. And I don't know about you, I want to be forgiven. I need to be forgiven. I got to be forgiven. Because some of the stuff that I have done, all the stuff that I've done that wasn't right in the sight of God, I need to be forgiven of. And I can't allow pride to keep me from receiving the forgiveness that God had made available for me. Now, he said, when the Father forgives us, guess what? We're going to have whatsoever we say. Huh? I said, we're going to have whatsoever we say. And if you're married, you need to really practice doing that real quick. Real quick. I had the Lord to say to me, what are you waiting on? She's the weaker vessel. Not weak in the sense of being just fragile and all that kind of stuff. But she's the vessel that I've connected to you for you to lead. And now you don't abandon your role in leadership and expecting of her to do something that you need to do first. That boy preaching up in here today. Good God Almighty. <laughs> To God be all the glory. To God be all of the praise. You people are special. Or he wouldn't be talking like he's talking to you in here today. We've got to set a watch over our mouths. And we can't get upset when people say, you shouldn't have said that. Because if you be around me and you start talking that doubt, unbelief, and fear, and all oh, want to talk about coronavirus and all that hellish stuff, I ain't thinking about no coronavirus. One man said, come on, the rest of y'all still paralyzed. I'm not. I don't get up in the morning thinking about no coronavirus. I'm not trying to keep up with the numbers. I don't need no booster shot. They say everybody 65 and over can, can just automatically come on in and get the booster shot. You know, they... They got a, a certain line for you, you know. My booster shot is 1 Peter 2.24, Isaiah 53 and 5, Matthew 8.17, Exodus 23, 25. My booster shot is Psalm 91, 1 through 16. My booster shot is Psalms 103, verse 1 through 5. My booster shot is Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22 and verse 25. Get healed and get your eyes right, Carl. Booster shot. Can't you tell I'm jacked up right about now? <laughs> and listen, let me say this to you. Be very, very cautious as to who you start talking faith around. Because they'll look at you like, man, you crazy. They'll think you're stupid when you say, I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm set free. I'm a multimillionaire. You don't want to get around Thomas talking like that. You got family members that's religious that'll try to talk you out of that. 
Some of them will try to get you over there, you know, on Randolph Road. Come on, come on, I know some of y'all from different parts of the country, but <laughs> Randolph Road is where the mental institution is. <laughs> I had a whole lot of people told me, you can't do that. You can stick a shovel in the ground all you want to on that land. When I was walking it off, the Lord said, don't you talk too many people about this. I think we had about 30 people we were passing that time, and I messed around and opened my mouth about it, and 15 or better of them left. <laughs> yeah. There's people that will try to cross-examine your faith. They don't know what you know, so you don't even expect of them to believe what you believe. You too sick to go to church. Nah, you getting ready to get well. You just stay consistent and keep coming. You're going to lose the walker. You're going to lose the stick. You're going to lose the being. Next thing we know, we're going to see you coming up in here. Because you have whatsoever you said. And God says you're the healed, living in divine health. The devil says you're sick. And you're getting ready to die. That's right. Amen. Not so. Don't let people label you based on where you came from. You're from the country. I'm from the city. You're from uh, 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 Tupelo, Mississippi. I'm from New York. Your status in life is not determined by your parents naturally. Or by where you were born. Because when you become a child of God, you've got to come to the realization and revelation that you came from above. And the Bible says it hadn't even appeared what you're going to be. Because as he is, so are you. Right in this present world. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I'm using the word big now. Yeah. It's time to go bigger. Yeah. Y'all ain't talking too much up here. It's time to go bigger. It's time to increase everything. Yeah. I say it's time to increase everything. Yeah. Bigger mindset. Bigger in the anointing, bigger in vision, bigger in purpose. I want to see it all before I check out of here. Because I know that where I'm going is going to blow my mind. And I don't want to stand before God and he said, now that's what I had for you, but this is what you settled for. I want to stand before me and say, Carl, I almost ran out of supplies because you kept on getting big. Now come on in here. Come on. Y'all in. <laughs> it's time to build that dream house. Come on, somebody. It's time to hire those maids. Ah, Jesus. Bigger. That's the word of the Lord. Bigger. It's time to go bigger. I'm looking for more property. Bigger. I'm looking to do something else besides this. Bigger. And, you know, if you're not there, then find wherever you're supposed to be. And I'm not trying to diss diss nobody or dismiss you from this ministry. But I can't let nobody stop me from going bigger. Black folk got a house when I was a boy. 
and they settled for the 30 years to pay for that house. That's crazy. Who want to be paying for a doggone house 30 years? You better clean that boy up and sell it. And get one bigger than that one, stand that one, clean that one up and sell it. Bigger. Why can't God's people have a Rolls Royce? See, one lady clapped, the rest of them playing with their masks on that one. Well, I don't want that. God say you're royalty. To see this couple here ride up here next Sunday morning in a brand new Rolls Royce. We're kingdom people. And it's time we represent the kingdom. Oh, they ain't feeling me over here. Let me go back over here somewhere. Can somebody see bigger? I mean, can, I'm going to cast out more devils this year than I ever have since I've been saved. That's bigger. I'm going to get more people born again this year than I've ever got. That's bigger. I got to come out of that, third, uh, you know, this is not us, but I'm, not, I'm no longer going to stay in this 3,000 square foot, 4,000 square feet house. I want 14,000 now. Come on now. Can't, can't, can't dream like that. Huh? Can't, can't see that, huh? Bigger. Yeah. We'll write one book and then go to bragging. One doggone book. And that's it. I'm going to tell you something, and I'm finished here too today. One of the worst things you can do is settle down into a nine to five. And keep hitting a doggone clock. You just pawn your faith. You just put your faith in the pawn shop. Right. Hmm? Hmm? I, I'm asking the Lord right now this, at this time here, am I, are we still supposed to be in this city? But pastor, you're getting ready to be said in it. That's, what you, that's you talking. I'm still like a football player. <laughs> huh? you don't get in physical shape to try to be appealing to people I get in physical shape for two reasons for the kingdom and for my family for the kingdom so that people can see that in our older age we can be as watered gardens And that our latter rain is far more exceeding than our former rain. You know what I got on the back of my Rolls Royce? Exceed. Amen. Where you get that from, Carl? Ephesians chapter number 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly. I went in the bank the other day and came out, and these two white young fellas, they were sitting in the car up beside Mr. Royce. I call him Mr. Royce. <laughs> this is funny. This is funny. Get out of there. I, I had a little, little juice to come out of my nose there. And it ain't COVID. It's snots. Somebody sneezed and people go. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was, I was at a place, well, it was the bank, actually. And uh, when I came out of the bank, these two young white fellas, they had a nice car. I think it was a Camaro, and they had the dual exhaust on it. 
some of them Camaros are really sharp, you know, and they were sitting there and they were clicking pictures and all that kind of stuff, you know. I told, I said to Michelle yesterday, you know, if I could just get $100 for every shot, that would definitely increase our portfolio. So when I walked out, they stopped taking the shots. And the one in the driver's seat said, he said, hey, brother. <laughs> he called me his brother, you know. <laughs> you know, good well, if I'd been in a Pinto, he wouldn't have called me a brother. He said, hey, brother. <laughs> but see, I'm only sharing this with you all to say to you. You will be amazed at the doors that God would have you to walk through when his success is really working in your lives. And I know I said I was going to close, but I'm really going to close on this because the zero's back there. Seriously, you really need to hear this, and I am going to stop, you know, because... I want to go eat now. Uh, I just don't believe that God, all this money circulating in this country, I, you can't convince me that only ball players are supposed to be having that kind of money. Entertainers and you, you, you can't convince me of that. Solomon didn't catch a football, nor did his daddy, David. Job was not in Hollywood. I want you to begin to say out of your mouth that you have wealth in abundance. And just keep saying it and keep saying it, and you're going to believe that thing. And after you believe it, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because it's going to start showing up in your lap. Or God going to give you ideas how to get it. And how to grow it and expand it. And come more into it. I'm going to begin. I'm going to finish this on next Sunday and do a part two on this. Because this, I want to take you to Matthew 5 and 8. And, and show you some things. There's just so much. This The word is packed with this. And... It's the master key. I remember I called for a business, a business that I didn't even know how to do. And God put me with a man that was doing that business. And after I stayed with that man, I bet not even a whole year, God gave me the business. And then I walked into the business qualified because he had put me with somebody that had been doing it for 20 years. And he gave me what I needed for nothing. Hmm? I believe God wants to use somebody to give you a house. Ah, you can't think like that, can you? Huh? Huh? Yeah, I believe that. I'm talking about some instant manifestation of God's favor and grace. It's coming your way right now. I, it's coming your way right now, I'm telling you. Yeah, that, that car, that car, it's coming your way. It's coming your way now. I see your bank accounts not doubling up but tripling and quadrupling. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? This is the year that your artist sexes will find you hmm? and will revolutionize your life forever. If the Bible says we're the head and not the tail, that means we don't start on the bottom. Amen. All right, you all stand, please. We're going to leave up out of here. Ain't no sense in staying any longer. That was enough for us to consume. And praise God for it. It's just 1231. Isn't that good? Praise the Lord. We got what we need, and we need to get on up out of here now. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus.
Thank you, dear Jesus. We had not done this in a while. I want you to ask the person next to you if they're saved, if they're born again, if they've been filled with the Holy Spirit, if they want to unite with the church. And, you know, you all do the altar call. And if they say yes to any of that, you walk with them down here. And, and we'll make sure they get ministered unto. And I know y'all, you know you got on your mask and all of that. But y'all gone it. Let's, let's get in violation. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. Salvation, rededication, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or to unite with Faith Soldiers Work Ministry. Praise God. Will you do one thing for me? Will you just take a moment here, just maybe 15, 20 seconds, to appreciate Jesus for this word, for this word today? For this word today? For this word today? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I need to say this to you, that today you will intentionally and willfully put a check on your mouth. And you now will begin to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Somebody receive that. So I want to show you how your words are supposed to be seasoned with salt and how they're supposed to be grace for the hearers. We didn't get a chance to get to that. But I just believe, God, Father, that you'll let us teach this on next Sunday and just go deeper with it. Because we really didn't even touch the surface today. You can rearrange your lives with the words of your mouth. You can rearrange your relationships with the words of your mouth. You can rearrange your financial status in life, how you are, where you are, what you're doing spiritually. You can rearrange all of that with the words of your mouth. These are keys and principles that come from God's word. These are not keys and principles that come from Fred Price or Kenneth Hagin or Kenneth Copeland. No, they learned it from the Bible just like I did. And it works. All right, praise God. We want to take this opportunity now to love on God financially. Just to love on him financially. Come on, put your hands together for that. Just to love on God financially. Sow your best seed in this ministry. Sow your very best seed in this ministry. Uh, We're not subjugated to any kind of times that people keep on saying these are trying times and all that. They're trying, if you own that, trying, if that's your mindset. That's not my mindset. God don't change based on the world's times. Hmm. Faith changes situations. Faith changes circumstances. Situations and circumstances don't change us. We change them. Got it? So go ahead and prepare your best seed. And as we sow today, I do want you to consider that I need to continue to be a force financially in my ministry, in my local church. I need to continue to keep at the forefront of my thinking that there is a need here, and I need to make sure that I'm connected with helping to supply that need. All right? So as you do, go ahead and stand, and then we'll pray over your tithes and your offerings, over our tithes and offerings, because we do the same. And then we'll get ready to go. Praise God forevermore. We'll wait on you. Oh, I love you so much, Letha. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Uh, next next Sunday, if you have somebody in your family, we're going to take time to lay hands on on the sick next Sunday. Uh, The diseased, the bound, whatever the situation may be. So bring them with you or invite them. Go pick them up, whatever the case 
whatever you might need to do because God manifests in this place with a healing anointing and people do get healed. I was online a few days ago. <laughs> My son tickled me with this. And as I was going off on the end, some of you all was watching. Uh, I started calling out certain type of sickness and disease. And the first one was, there's been a boil up under your arm. There's been pain up under your arm. And I, uh, I've heard some testimonies of that, but my son was the first one when I called him. He said, Dad, I ain't want to say nothing to nobody. He said, this thing been up under my arm. He said, but when you spoke it, it's gone. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Glory to God. And somebody else told me about one, you know, but God is so good and he's so worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you for every gift, every seed. We thank you for the sowers that have sown in obedience to you. Father, honor their seed today. Cause now men to give into their bosoms. Cause financial doors to open in their behalf. I release my faith for them in their behalf that they will experience abundant supply. This week, I claim it. I release my faith for it. I call it done in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. The ushers will tell you what you need to do. I'm going to drink some water here.